you and greetings from Rivers of Living Water International, Muskegon, where our senior leaders are Apostle Rod and Prophetess Selena Stevenson. We greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and we just thank you today for tuning in to our broadcast today. We uh, understand that you could have tuned in to any other broadcast, but so we just thank you today for tuning in today, and we believe that you're going to be blessed. We are in a series of uh, God's kingdom, uh, of God's era of his favor and his kingdom. We're learning how to move as kingdom citizens in the earth, those with authority, dominion, and power, for this is the set time that even that God has favored his people and to rise up and so on today we just wanted you to put your expectations expectators on expect get your expectations raised up today and be expecting for a move of God expect for wisdom and revelation to be released expect to receive from God forever you need because he is Jehovah Jireh he is the God that sees your need and provides it and so today we just gonna come boldly before the throne of God today and we're going to believe God to do the supernatural. There are some things that was in my spirit today, even as a regards unto kingdom. And how many of you know that God has given us keys, 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 keys. The Bible says in Matthew 16 and 19 that I give you the keys of the kingdom and whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven and so today we just gonna just go before the lord our god and we're gonna even unlock those keys we're gonna stick the key in you know the key is the word of god the authority that opens up the door is jesus name and so right now we're gonna go in and we're gonna use the key of the word today the key of david which is our authority which is our right and which is our privilege as kingdom citizens to move and operate on the level that blows people's minds and so right where you're at today come on and just lift up a shout of praise unto our God today lift up your name of Jesus today and we're coming before you today father God just acknowledging that you are God and God alone we acknowledge you today father God that it is you Lord God the Lord God Elohim the creator of heaven and earth it is you that have created us and not we ourselves and father god we thank you today that you have created us in your image and in your likeness you have crowned us with glory and honor and you have given us dominion over the works of your hands we acknowledge father god that the earth is yours and the fullness thereof the world and all they that dwell therein but the earth oh lord have you given unto the sons of men oh god to to occupy father god to be fruitful and to multiply lord god you oh lord told us in your word father god to take authority oh god over everything in the seas over every creeping thing over every beast of the field and today father god we walk in that dominion that authority and that power that you have given us father god as sons father god we come even now father god with a heart of repentance today father god for your word declares father god repent for the kingdom of god is at hand and so father god today we repent father god even now lord god for our lack of knowledge oh god and our ignorance oh lord that has caused us father god to live father god as paupers oh god as beggars oh god in the kingdom lord god and so father god we rise up today father god and we oh lord declare today that we oh lord will be filled the oh lord with the knowledge oh god of your kingdom oh lord we declare today father god that we are filled with the knowledge oh lord of your will oh god and all wisdom and his spiritual understanding that enables us father god to walk oh god and dominion and authority oh lord in the mighty name of jesus christ and so father today in the name of jesus christ we take authority now father god over sickness oh god and disease we take authority oh god over oh god poverty and lack oh god we take authority oh god over depression father god in the name of jesus christ for you told us in your word 
oh God, that you came, oh God, for that we may become rich, oh God, and that you, oh God, have, oh God, borne sickness, oh God, before us, oh God, and that we, oh God, are healed, oh Lord. And so today, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we declare today, Father God, healing, oh God, of the soul, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we declare today, Father God, healing, oh Lord, upon our minds today. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we, oh God, even break, oh God, depression, oh God, anxiety, and frustration now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, and we loose, oh God, today, oh God, the joy of the Lord, oh God, that brings forth, oh God, a strength, oh God, unto your people, oh God, to arise up, oh God, and begin, oh God, to stand, oh God, on the authority, oh God, of the spoken word of Jesus Christ. You said in your word, oh God, that no devil in hell, oh God, the gates of hell, oh God, will not prevail, oh God, against us, oh God. And so we declare today, oh Lord, every attack, oh God, of the enemy, oh God, that comes before us, oh God, we declare in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, it will not prosper in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And so, Father, today, we just thank you today, Father God, for repentance, oh God, that changes, oh God, our mindset, oh God. We thank you today, Father God, that we have come, oh Lord, into the knowledge, oh God, of the Holy One, oh God, that brings forth, oh Lord, an understanding, oh Lord, of who we are, oh God, and whose we are, oh God, in the kingdom of God. And so, Father God, we take authority today, oh God. We walk in dominion and power, and we declare today, Father God, your word according to Luke 10 and 19, oh God, that you have given unto us, oh God, power, oh God, to tread, oh God, over the enemy, oh God. And so we tread, oh God, upon the enemies of lack, oh God. We tread, oh God, upon the enemies, oh God, of depression. We tread, oh Lord, upon the enemies, oh God, of sickness and disease, oh God. And even now, oh God, according, oh God, into the name of Jesus Christ, the key, oh God, of the kingdom, Lord God. We, oh God, even now, oh God, insert, oh God, even now, oh God, Psalms 103, oh God, into the earth realm, oh God, and we declare today, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, healing, oh God, oh God, comes unto your believers, oh God, of sickness, oh God, and disease, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we stick in, oh God, the key, oh God, to unlock, oh God, prosperity, oh Lord, in the earth, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ, upon your kingdom citizens, oh God, and we declare today, oh God, wealth, oh God, riches, oh God, are in our house. We declare today, oh God, prosperity, oh God, of soul, mind, will, and emotions, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we declare today, oh God, no lack, no leanness, no insufficiency, oh God. It will not be, oh God, named, oh God, amongst us, oh God, as king of citizens in the earth, oh God, because you told us in your word, they, oh Lord, that fear the Lord shall not lack, oh God. And so we, oh God, declare today, oh God, no good thing, oh God, is withheld, oh God, but we, your kingdom people, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, so we arise, oh God, today, Father God, in might, oh God, in the might of the power of the Spirit, oh God, because it's not by might, nor by power, but by your Spirit, and now, oh God, let the greater one, oh God, that is on the inside of us, oh God, be activated, oh God, to show forth, oh God, the power, oh God, of your Spirit, oh God, know today, oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, you told us, oh God, that in your word, oh Lord, that the kingdom, oh God, is not only preached, oh God, but with demonstration, oh God, of the spirit, oh Lord. And you told us in your word, oh God, that we are well able to do exceedingly and abundantly above what we ask or think according to the power that lies on the inside of us, oh God. And so, Father, today, we, oh God, even now, Lord God, we declare today, Father God, Power, oh God, of the authority of Jesus Christ, oh God, it manifests, oh Lord, even though Lord in our day, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we declare today, oh God, salvation, Lord God, we declare, oh God, deliverance, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we declare healing, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we are your kingdom people, oh God, and we believe, oh God, and so today, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we declare today, oh God, works, oh God, that of your spirit, oh God, manifest, oh God, through us, oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. But you told us in your word that they know God that believe, oh God, 
on you, Lord God. Greater, oh God, shall we do, oh God, in the earth. And so, Father God, we dismantle, oh God, even now, all doubt and unbelief in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And we declare today, oh God, what the works of the Lord Jesus Christ with signs and wonders and miracles, oh Lord, they manifest, oh God, even, oh God, through us in the mighty name of the Jesus Christ. We declare today by the stretching forth, oh God, of the hand, oh God, we declare healing, oh God, even now, oh God, throughout these broadcasts, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we declare today, oh God, by the finger, oh God, of the almighty God, oh God, every, oh God, it's demonic entity, oh God, cast out, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we declare today, oh God, liberation, oh God, even now, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we declare today, oh God, chains of bondage broken, chains of ignorance broken, chains of destruction, oh God, broken, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ, and so Father, today, we lift up, oh God, a shout of praise unto you, oh God, unto our God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, knowing that we have the victory. For the victory, oh God, is in Christ Jesus. And so we stand today, oh God, having our third voice, oh God. Third it up, oh God, with truth, oh God. And then thank you today that the truth of your glorious word has set us free, oh Lord, from the lies and the deceptions, oh Lord, of the enemy, oh Lord. And so, Father, today, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we come, oh Lord, today, Father God, even now with expectation, Father, for you to do wonders, for you to do miracles, oh God. Even now, oh God, as we set aside, set apart ourselves, oh God, even, oh God, from the world, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we call upon the covenant name of Jehovah Makadesh today, the God that sanctifies. And we decree and declare today, oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, every, oh God, man, woman, and child, under the sound, oh Lord, of my voice, oh God, we declare today a manifestation of Joshua 3 and 5, that you proclaim, sanctify yourself, for on tomorrow I will do wonders among you. And so, Father, today, we declare today, oh Lord, miracles, signs, wonders, oh God, performed, oh God, even in the lives, oh God, of your people today, who have, oh God, set or set themselves apart, oh God, from the thing, oh God, of this world, oh God, and we declare today, oh God, heaven invades earth, oh God, today, oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we declare today, oh God, kingdom exploits, oh God, kingdom power, oh God, because we know you, Lord God, and you told us in your word that they that know their God shall do exploits, and so far Father, today, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we, O oh Lord, even now stand, O oh Lord, in faith, O oh God, of what you have promised, O oh God, being fully persuaded that what you have spoken concerning your church, your ecclesia, your called out ones, O oh God, your sick ones, O oh God, that you will perform, O oh God. And so, Father, today, we stand, O oh God, in agreement today, O oh God, knowing, O oh God, that it is finished, O oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we stand today, O oh God, and we lose today a spirit of endurance, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, that will cause, oh God, your people, oh God, just remain steadfast, unmovable, oh God, and abound, oh God, in faith, oh God, of your word that you have promised unto we, your people, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we declare today, oh God, that we will not think, oh God, in this time, we will not think in 2021, in the time of, oh God, of a pandemic, oh God, because our strength, oh Lord, it comes, oh God, from you, Lord God, our strength, our joy, oh God. It comes, oh Lord, from you. For you are our peace. You are our righteousness. You are the lifter of our head. And we look into the hills which come at our help. Our help, Lord God. It comes from you. For you are our help, oh God, in a time of trouble. And we cry out today, oh God. Oh, show yourself strong, oh God, in this hour, oh God. Show forth, oh God, your might, oh Lord. Show forth the power, oh God, of your word, oh God, that all, oh God, and our spirit, oh God, will marvel, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We pray today, oh Lord. Now, Father God, let, oh Lord, the power of heaven, oh God, the power of your word, oh God, let it manifest, oh Lord, in the earth, oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We pray, oh Lord, today, Father God, it's not by might, oh Lord. It's not by our own, oh God, power, but it is by your spirit, oh God. And so, Father, today, 
in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let your spirit, oh God, be poured out, oh God. Even, oh God, among the nations of the earth, oh God. Pour out, oh God, your spirit, oh God. Or even upon the nations, upon every church, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And that that will become, oh Lord, liberation, oh God. What you said in your word, where the spirit of the Lord is. There is liberty, oh God. And we declare today every chain, oh God, a bondage, oh God, broken, oh God. In the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you today, oh God, that the spirit of bondage, oh God, is uprooted, oh God. And the spirit of adoption, oh God, is loosed, oh God, even though released, oh God, in the earth, oh God. Well, we no longer, oh God, function, oh God, as bastards, oh God. Those, oh Lord, that would not come into your house, but we will function, oh God, as sons, oh God, of the most high God. Those that have been in through with power. Those, oh God, that have an inheritance, oh God. Those, oh God, that have what they say. And we say today, oh God, healing comes in the name of Jesus. We say today, joy comes in the name of Jesus. We say today, provision comes in the name of Jesus. We declare deliverance comes in the name of Jesus Christ. And we, oh Lord, even now, oh God, proclaim, oh Lord, today, you as God. We, oh God, even now, oh God, Kick down every idol, Lord God, that we have put before you. Our jobs, our wives, our husbands, our children, oh God. We kick them over now, oh God. And we proclaim today that you are God and God alone, oh God. There is no other God but thee, oh Lord. And we come unto you today believing, oh God, that you are, oh God. Whatever we need, that you are Jehovah. That you are Jehovah Nisi. That you are our banner. That you are Jehovah Jireh, our provider. That you are Jehovah's description of our righteousness. That you are Jehovah Waha. You are a shepherd. That you are Jehovah Shammah. The God that is here with us, oh God, today. And so, Father God, we lift up, oh God, our hands, oh God, in submission unto you today. We lift up, oh God, a voice of praise unto you today, Lord God. Acknowledging, oh God, your greatness. Your acknowledging, oh God, your power, oh God. Let our praise, oh God, even now, oh God, ring out, oh Lord, through the earth, oh God. And let it steal, oh Lord God, in every enemy, oh God. We say today, oh Lord, that you are great. We proclaim today, oh Lord, that you are great. We say today, oh Lord, that you are great. You are great. Great in power. Great in power. Great in love. Great in love. We say today, oh Lord, that you are great. You are great. We proclaim today, oh Lord, that you are great. Great. Awesome in power, awesome in power, awesome in strength, awesome in strength, awesome in love, awesome in love. But well, you are great, you are great. I just heard the word of the Lord that say that through the greatness of thy power, thy enemies will submit themselves unto thee. And so right now, where you at, just begin to proclaim the Lord's greatness. Come on, say that you are great. 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 The Lord is great. The Lord is great. The Lord is great. The Lord is great. Sabiot is great. Sabiot is great. Sabiot is great. Sabiot is great. Come on, lift up a praise in this world. Come on. 
Let the sound of praise be heard. We've, we have released the greater one. That means we've given him permission to step into the midst of my situation. See, because sometimes you just got to know when you can't do it in your own strength. That I need the greater one that lives on the inside of me. Do what only you can do, God. But see, the, the good thing about our God is he'll do it through us. He gives us the authority. He gives you the authority to drive that sickness out of your body. To take authority over your mind. To take authority over that situation. But see, all you got to do is release him into it. You just got to release his goodness this morning. Because our God is good. Come on and just lift up a praise right there. I need you to release a praise right there. Because the greater one lives in me. Hallelujah. The greater one lives in me. Hallelujah. Hey, I want to get away from that, but I can't get away from that one right there. Hey, the greater one lives in me. The greater one lives in me. Hey, come on. The greater one lives in me. The greater one lives in me. Come on, the greater one, the greater one lives in me. How oh, you're living, the greater one lives in me. And he's breathing, greater one lives in me. And he's moving, the greater one lives in me. Greater one lives, the greater one lives in me. He's breathing, the greater one lives in me. He's living in me. And he's moving me. Greater one lives in me. We owe him praise for all he's done. You pray for all you've done. Come on, I owe. I owe you pray. Come on, for all you've done. I owe you pray. I owe you pray. Come on, for all you've done. I owe you pray. I owe you pray. For all you've done. For all you've done. I owe you pray. I owe you pray. For all you've done. Oh, you are excellent. Oh, you are excellent. Oh, you are excellent. 
excellent. For you are 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 excellent. Great Jehovah, you are good. We owe you praise. We owe you thanks. Call his name, Great Jehovah. Great Jehovah. You are good.
to be praised. And then you start thinking about, well, yeah, you know, my wrist, my wrist is a little sore this morning, but I owe the Lord praise. How many people can identify with the fact that, you know what, I may have been a little tired this morning, but I owe the Lord praise. Yeah, you know what? My my breath may have been a little bit tart this morning. <laughs> but I owe the Lord praise. I know I'm just, I'm being a little comical with it. But God is worthy is simply what we're saying this morning. If you recognize the Lord is worthy, will you just shout unto the Lord? Hallelujah! I owe you praise. I owe you praise. Because you're worthy. Hallelujah. You're worthy. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. We're going to just pause just, just real quick. We're going to pause for just a brief announcement. We want you to, uh, all of our members and our family, we want you to know and prepare yourselves. March 7th, everyone say March 7th. March 7th. March 7th, in-house. We're going to have an in-house business meeting at 915. Say 915. 915. March 7th, we're going to have an in-house business meeting at what time? 9.15. In-house only for all of our members. Amen? We're going to go over our financials. We're going to disclose to you where our ministry is standing, where everything has been allotted, where what, what we've done with our finances. You don't get this everywhere, right? Amen. So we ask you to prepare yourselves. And we want you to be here. It's as important. All right? Yes. All right, March 7th at 9.15, we're going to have our annual business meeting. We want to see you all there. God bless you. We're going to also ask uh, just to, as a, uh, just for proper flow in the house, uh, please, <clears throat> we ask that you would refrain from using the restrooms on this side of the sanctuary because we want to reserve those for our leaders and those that are preparing for ministry. Amen. So we want to make sure that those restrooms are available for our leaders, anyone preparing for ministry. We might even have delegates that are visiting with us. So we want to make sure that those restrooms are available. We ask you to use the restrooms on this side of the sanctuary. Amen. Amen. Also, please remember as you are coming in, uh, and when you're going through our screening process, please be sure to grab an offering envelope uh, as you're coming in. As you're sanitized, be sure to grab an offering envelope for your giving. All right? So now, with that being said, we are going to pause to give you an opportunity to give this morning. God bless you. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Are you excited to give this morning? Hallelujah. If there is anyone who did not take the opportunity to grab an envelope, if you still need one for your giving, just raise your hand. Our ushers and greeters will see that you get one. If you are giving, if you're using text to give, this is, this, this is for those of you that are in-house. If you're using text to give, please be sure to still make out an envelope. That way Deacon Cora doesn't have to make one out for you. All right, now that we've got that out of the way, we want to say God bless you. Welcome those of you that are uh, worshiping online with us. We're so glad uh, that you are with us. We want to say hello and good morning to Sister Sandra. God bless you. We love you. We can see you smiling right now through the camera, sis. <laughs> we miss you this morning. God bless you. Um, Saints, we love you. We are so honored for your faithfulness. Uh, it is because of your generous giving, your consistency, and just your devotion and commitment to the furtherance of the gospel that this ministry has been able to continue in its commission, which is to advance the kingdom and further the gospel of Jesus Christ. We recognize that it is because of you, and so we just want to say thank you. On behalf of our senior leaders, Apostle Rod and Prophetess Selena Stevenson, we say a special thank you on behalf of this ministry. God bless you. Um, you may mail your gift by making a check or money order payable to R-O-L-W-M-I. The mailing address is 1550 East Laketon Avenue, Muskegon, Michigan, 49442. You may also visit our website 
at rolwmuskegon.com. There you can give by way of debit, credit card, or PayPal. Uh, you can also use our cash app at dollar sign R-O-L-W Muskegon. And then you heard me mention it earlier, you can also use text to give. And that number is area code 231-221-2160. That number again, 231-221-2160. Please text the word give and include a dollar amount. And we'll receive your giving with gladness. God bless you, saints. We're going to receive our worship ministry yet again. We're going to continue to go higher with them. Come on, stay excited. Stay engaged. After our worship ministry, the next voice you will hear will be that of our very own Apostle Rod Stevenson. God bless you.
Father, you are good, and your mercy endureth forever. You are so good. You are so good. He's so good that he prepared everything that you would ever need before you ever needed it. I want you to think about that for just a second. He's so good that he prepared everything that you would ever need before you ever needed it. That's how good he is. Come on, tell him. Say, Lord, you're so good. You prepared everything that I would ever need before I ever needed it. Come on now, give him some praise this morning. Give him some glory this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let praise and glory rise. God bless you. You can have your seat. Hallelujah this morning. I want to just say thank you for pressing out and coming into the house of the Lord to, to worship and just honor him and to give and to serve uh, with us this uh, morning. Thank you for our worship team. Amen. Who has ushered in just a beautiful presence of the Lord. Um, who has done such an awesome job this morning of bringing in his presence. I want to just welcome all of those uh, who are attending this morning uh, via uh, social media uh, throughout um, the earth. Amen. Those of you that are tuning in, we want to just say welcome, welcome to Rivers of Living Water. Amen. We thank you for joining the Rivers family um, this uh, morning. Amen. God is just doing some awesome things in uh, the earth. And even though we're seeing, obviously, you know, um, as I would de probably um, describe it as turbulent or perilous times, the Bible says in the last days, Jesus said that there would be, you know, perilous times and, you know, where people would begin to perish. <laughs> and we're seeing that in a time and in a moment that is so challenging, it also becomes an opportunity. It's one of the things that God has taught us and shown us that the worse the situation, the greater the acceleration of his of his glory, of his mercy, of his of his grace. The Bible says that when when sin abounds and begins to increase, what happens to the grace of God? <laughs> Amen. It begins to accelerate the unmerited favor of God. So knowing this. We know that during a time in an era that we're living in now, God's purpose and desire is to increase his grace, his unmerited favor. And if and if we don't expect it if we don't have the right appropriation of faith to receive it we're going to miss it we're going to miss it and so i want to encourage you this morning amen to have the right appropriation of faith that you can receive everything that god has for you we've been talking about and doing this series on the believer's authority how many have been blessed by by this series the believer's authority um I was talking last week and, and me and my wife were conversating and what what I like to do is <clears throat> I believe because we've been hearing so many testimonies um, that have been uh, people that have been kind of sharing through different people and, and s things that have been posted over Facebook and different things that are that are that are happening. I want to encourage you and ask that you would help us that if you would begin to. Uh, share some of these testimonies that you would get them to um, our elders and leaders so that we can begin to share some of these testimonies. I, I had a vision last week where 
we were just sharing some of these tes testimonials of what uh, the Lord was doing and how God is impacting and how this word is changing your life and how uh, Rivers uh, Ministry has been a blessing uh, to you and uh, what is being taught and what you're learning and what you're demonstrating and moving and what is taking place in your life. There's something about the power of a testimony. A power of a testimony. That all of a sudden when we begin to hear what God is doing through other people, what happens is it inspires and it it activates a level of faith and belief in you that says that, man, if God can do this for Sister Karen, I know God can do this for me. God is not a respected person. And all of a sudden, you know, especially when you see or you hear something that, you know, uh, was just unbelievable, just supernaturally taking place and transpiring and and happening. And, you know, this is a season where I'm 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 expecting for the supernatural. Matter of fact, the word I chose for the year is resurrection. Amen. Resurrection. So I'm preparing myself to resurrect the dead, to raise the dead. I don't know when or where it may happen or where the opportunity may be. But mentally, my mind, I visualize I've already seen it in the name of Jesus, that it is no different than waking somebody up that's sleeping. <laughs> Why? Because I have the authority to do it. It's not my power. It's the power of Jesus Christ, the resurrection power that lives and resides on the inside of me. So it's no harder than commanding to somebody to uh, a, a headache to go. But what is your appropriation of faith toward that? I decree resurrection in your life. Amen. I'm going to be talking a little bit today about revival. The title of my um, message is Believe and Receive, but I want to talk about it as it pertains to revival because my goal is to simply activate you. That revival will begin to break out. You know, some people say, what is what what is what is revival? You know, we all have this image of revival. And so, you, you know me, I went to the original Webster's, you know, 1828. And, and you know, <laughs> I want to see, you know, how did Webster's originally uh, define revival? It's interesting because he says the first definition of revival is to return. <laughs> to return. To recall a recovery of life from death or apparent death as a revival of a drowned person. Now, now that'll preach right there. Number two, return or recall to activity from a state of of lager as the revival of spirits. Number three, recall, return to recovery from a state of neglect. Wow. From a state of neglect. Uh, is there some things that we've been neglecting? I believe we've been neglecting the power of God. <laughs> I believe we've been neglecting the word of God. It says obscurity or depression as the revival of letters or learning. And then number four, renewed and more active attention to religion and awakening of men to their spiritual concerns. An awakening of men to the spiritual concerns that people have in our society. You know, I was thinking about how the scripture talks about, you know, the reviving of a drowned man. That, that, that man, somebody that's drowned, is dead. And that, you know, you may give that person, um, you know, what do they call it, CPR? You know, a lot of times you have to, you know, turn them over their side and, and get the water out, you know, and, and then you breathe breath, spirit, pneuma into their body. And then all of a sudden that breath now enters into their body, which is life coming out of you going into them. It's a form of resurrection. We, we never think about it, but C CPR is a form of resurrection. Why? Because you're breathing breath and life into someone else. And now that water that that has been occupying that that space now comes out of them and they're revived. 
So what is it when we began to, to preach the gospel and we began to minister and we began to counsel, we began to share the truth with other people, what happens is they're being revived. How many know that there's some people that's drowning right now? There's some people that are spiritually dead right now, that they're waiting on us. They're waiting on us. You know, I began to think in, you know, in terms like this, what would happen if, if we just had 20 people that would just click into a mindset and a mentality to just begin to, to, to minister, preach the gospel, and, and to begin to mentor and to begin to find people that were in need, whether it was health needs or, you know, financial needs or family issues or marital problems. Or, and, and we began to now focus and spend time beginning to just strengthen and build and bring re revival in their life and restoration in their life. Man, this church would literally just explode. It would explode. That's what revival really is. You know, me and the wife were talking and, and um, we were discussing when we originally um, planted a church here in Muskegon, family, family worship center, that we were sent here with a, 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 a Apostle John Evans, and it was in 1991, September of 1991. A lot of you remember that. And when we began to build that church, and God began to do something supernatural, and, and, and all of a sudden um, I was challenged with being over the evangelism ministry. And... We began to look at ways of how we could actually build and bring revival within the church. And I remember going through all of the um, uh, the financial records of all the people that had come and given and, 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 and that were visitors. And I think at one time I had looked at it, I was like, man, this is crazy. We've had over 5,000 people come through this church. And I'm thinking that's a tenth of probably the population in Muskegon County literally had came through that church. And one of the things that had happened was, you know, we started the um, outreach ministry. How many, how many remember we had the Abrahams and we had the Barnabas and, you know, which were the encouragers. We had the Timothy, which were the home care of the small groups. And then we had the An Andrews that were going out, uh, actually knocking on doors, visit, vis visiting people. Amen. Then later we had the overcomers outreach that came in that was ministering to, you know, the drug addicted. And what ended up happening was we had individuals praying that, that, that felt like they had a passion for intercession, just in a room praying. Then we had teams that were going out, amen, that were visiting people that had visited the church that asked for and need, need, needed prayer. And then we had people that we had just appointed that had the gift of, of encouragement that we call Barnabas. And, and, you know, the Barnabas would just begin, their, their, their assignment was just to begin to encourage people, find people that needed to be encouraged. And I'm telling you, we were going into people's house. People were getting filled with the Holy Spirit. People were getting healed. Devils were being, being, being cast out. People were being saved. And we didn't realize we were in revival. We were in revival. And we didn't, we didn't even know it. And we kept pushing and pushing and pushing, you know, the ticket. We were having these meetings. My God. You know, sometimes I think back and... Uh, <laughs> You know, I think one of, one of the meetings that we did was seven days. Great joy in the city lasts for seven, seven days straight. <laughs> we were excited about church. My, my wife got saved in the mix of that revival. What, what, why am I saying this? Why am I sharing this? Because your husband might be in the mix of the revival, amen, that we're initiating right now, that we're talking about stirring up, amen. Your husband, amen, your wife might be in the mix of that revival. It was a willingness to sacrifice to go and to now begin to just love on people, minister to people, the results of it was the fact that we had people coming in that church and it was exploding. It was on fire and we, we didn't even know it. We didn't even know that we, we were in the mix of revival. That's what revival looks like. 
That's what revival looks like. A group of people who do not realize that on the inside of them is a potential of resurrection power, life and love, that they're willing to now a, a, a sacrifice to minister to someone else. See, the problem is that sometimes we devalue ourselves. And we have limited ministry to the point of saying, well, that's a pastor's job or that's an you know, elder job. Or you have to be a minister or be called into uh, a ministry before you can actually um, you know, begin to do ministry. And that's not true. Because you guys have heard me talk about many, many times some of the greatest miracles that God has done through my life has been just as Brother Rodney ushering in the church. Greaty and mighty miracles. So I want to I, I, I encourage you this morning. I want to encourage you this morning. Let God use you to preach the gospel. Be willing to be sent. There's a there's a sending dimension. What does it mean to be a part of an apostolic church? That apostolic talks about the sending dimension being sent, a sent one. An apostle is a sent one that has been commissioned and assigned to send people into their sphere of influence or into their harvest. How many know we're sent to this community? We've been sent to this community. And I want you to have the same mindset that I have. That when you sit down with people, you know that the, 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 the power of God is in you to heal. The power of God is in you to deliver. The power of God is in you to save. The power of God is in you, amen, to liberate. It's in you. All you have to do is take the initiative to take authority and begin to move out in it. I guarantee you. When we begin to approach it from that perspective, when we begin to tackle problems that we think that are bigger than ourselves. I was just sharing with you guys the other day that we had a couple call us. Apostle Kim had sent someone that came to her that needed ministry because they had a child that was born with. Um, have it was so 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 many complications epileptic seizures and all this other stuff that they said that this child was born with the child wouldn't survive the child would not live and we've been mentoring them walking them through this process and God is just doing miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle and we're going to walk them through this thing something that <laughs> an individual <laughs> of the highest education physician said would not happen and could not happen. A problem that is so huge that <laughs> the average parent wouldn't even attempt to even know what to do or how to address it, but letting them know that our God, <laughs> our God is greater and bigger than any thing that we can ever face or that we could ever deal with see the problem is is we haven't been taught right but I guarantee you in this house you've been taught right <laughs> and you're being taught right and the first thing that we taught them was this is that we asked them that do they believe that this child came from God they said yes and I said, if it came from God, the, what does the Bible say about every gift that God gives? It's not just good. It's perfect. It's perfect. Without shadow, without any blemishes. So therefore, if you believe that God gave you something and you accept it as is, it's not from God. So therefore, that means that everything else Every shadow, every blemish, every infirmity, everything that comes with it that the doctors may subscribe to it is not from God. And you have the right and authority to command it to go. That perfection would begin to come and manifest. See, and that's the place where when you're being taught right in the right church and the right ministry, that you don't just accept the fact that your child was born with something, amen, and it can never change and it will always be this way and they'll always need to be on medication and they'll always need this respirator or they'll always need this hole in their body or they're like, you know, when you have a revelation 
that now every everything changes because now you begin to now have the right appropriation of faith to demand and command what God has given you. And you don't receive what the enemy is trying to give you. Are you here, people of God? See, that's the difference. And that's when you begin to see miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle. God is just waiting and looking and wanting and desiring someone. Amen. That will have this understanding and that will come to a place where he can begin to just uh, partner with them. Let me say this, that as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, it's our responsibility to boldly. Now, let me add boldly. Somebody shout boldly. boldly, boldly preach the gospel. How many know that if you talk like that to a doctor, that's bold. When my father was in the hospital dying and they said the family come in and they, everybody pay their last respect. And then you look at the doctor and he's trying to be compassionate and tell you that, you know, your father is not going to make it. And you ask him, doctor, have you ever seen a miracle? And he don't know what to say. He can't stagger. And I said, you're, you're going to see a miracle. And everything that you said is not going to happen. <laughs> and they look at you like you're some type of religious idiot and a religious fanatic, but then once the miracle begins to manifest and now all of a sudden the doctor comes in and they're perplexed. They don't know what to think. They don't know what to say. And all they can say is that, you know, something ha happened. There was a miraculous recovery. Because spirit-filled doctors are rare and few. If you find one, you better hold on to them. Why? Because most men that are so intellectual, they have a hard time receiving spiritual things. And so they tend to now cling and, and grab a hold of their intellect versus the wisdom of God. What does God say about the wisdom of man? <laughs> the wisdom of man is, is foolishness. God takes the, the foolish things of this world and he confounds the wise. That is the place. That is our position. That is where we we come boldly. That's what it means to boldly preach the gospel. Just like it says, I want you to look at Romans 10, 13 through 15. It says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. He says, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? So how can you call on some some somebody if you don't really believe on them? I want to stop right there. Just pause. What causes people to simply believe in God? When people see the demonstration and the power of God, when they see God moving and functioning and working and operating in their life, that's why God needs you to engage and to begin to now begin to 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 um merge yourself into someone else's life who is in darkness, who don't believe. And now all of a sudden, when they see the hand of God, when they see your testimony of deliverance, when they see your testimony, amen, of healing, all of a sudden now they can begin to call on God because now they believe that there is a God and that God loves them and God does care for them. How shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? You can't believe on somebody who you've not heard about. And the problem is in America is that they've heard about God, but they have not seen the demonstration and the power of God. And we're claiming as Rivers of Living Water Ministries International, amen, that rivers, churches, are houses where the supernatural power of God and the demonstration of his power are not just active in the house, but they're active, amen, and available in the lives of the believers and those that are connected with this house. Why? Because the same power that raised Jesus from the dead, it resides in each and every one of us, and we realize it, amen, and we move to activate it. That's what we're talking about today. This is a kingdom era, and this is why I'm saying that this is an era of God's kingdom and divine favor. Why? Because his grace is increasing, and it's time for the church to move out of that place of complacency and despair and that victim uh, victimization and realize that you are not the victim, but you are the victor. 
You are the deliverer. While you're sitting there saying, I need deliverance and I need this and I need that, God is saying, would you rise up, amen, and stop whining and stop complaining and begin to, to, to release a miracle in someone else's life? See, we've come into a place of belief just because we feel that we're inadequate or we need something or we don't have what we want in our life that we can't bless or benefit someone else. That is the biggest lie that was ever told. That is the biggest lie that was ever told. <laughs> That's the biggest lie that was ever told. Because it's not you. It's the power of God. Hallelujah. That is in you. Mm -mm -mm. And how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Somebody say, I'm a preacher. I'm a preacher. See, a preacher convinces some, somebody of something. You're preaching this thing. You're declaring this thing. You're heralding this, this, this thing that you believe, that you know, that you know, that you know. And how should they preach except they be sent? I send you. I send you into the community. I send you as a sent one. I decree that you are commissioned, you are called, and you are sent to do the work. Stop thinking that the work is just for those who have a title. Titles mean nothing. Matter of fact, I think titles sometimes hinder people because we have a false revelation that we desire or want to be served when it means to simply to serve. It means nothing. And finally, he says, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring good tidings of good things. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's verse 17. But he says, how beautiful are the feet. Why is he saying that? Because feet represent that place of righteousness, right standing, right direction, right path. Those that are doing the right things. Having your feet shod with the gospel of, of the preparation of peace. God looks at our feet and say, how beautiful are your feet. I love the path. I love what you're doing. That's what he's literally saying. I love where your feet are going. I love what you're doing. And it's fine, you know, we have uh, uh, ministries and different people that do, you know, humanitarian things and, you know, take care of the poor and feed the hungry and give food and all that. But at the end of the day, if we're not preaching the gospel, none of that matters. Because what people are really needing and they're hungry for is the word of God. And unless we give it and we preach it with boldness, I want to add with boldness. Because there's some... There's some p things that need to be confronted with boldness. How can you be bold? Why? Because the testimonies, they overcame them by what? The testimonies. There's certain things that nobody can convince me of. Why? Because I've experienced and seen so many testimonies of what God has done over and over and over and over and over again. This is the problem he had with Israel because God had gave them testimony after testimony after testimony after testimony, delivering them, amen, and doing supernatural stuff. Can I just talk to you for a minute? Huh? I want you to think about something. They're in the wilderness. And one of the testimonies was that. <laughs> now, this is going to mess you up because y'all probably even thought about this, that the Bible says that they had the same clothes on and the same shoes on for over 40 years. Now, the real testimony is not the fact that the clothes and the shoes didn't wear out. But the real testimony was is that you had kids, amen, that was three years old in three-year-old size shoes, and they were still wearing the same shoes 40 years later when they was grown because God was increasing the size of the clothes. That's the miracle. That's the miracle. 
how you got a baby when you go in there, they decide the a Tiffany, but then you, <laughs> amen, you turn around. I mean me, I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> They decide to meet me, but then you turn around 40 years later, she a grown woman still in the same dress. Somebody say, now that's a miracle. See, we never think about that. <laughs> that's powerful stuff. And then they turn around and still forsake God after seeing miracle after miracle, after being in the midst of a desert, not around anything, amen, that is remotely looked like meat. And God calls a strong wind to blow from the sea and blow all of these, amen, birds over to the mix of them and give them meat. Meat, not just the manna from heaven. But send meat in the mix of the desert. These birds ain't got no business in the desert. Birds don't hang out in the desert because they know ain't nothing out there for them to eat. Ain't no water. <laughs> ain't no life. And then they still doubt God after doubting God. How many miracles do you need in your life? How much of his glory, how much of his presence do you need to see before now you begin to move out in boldness and declare the goodness, the power, the authority of God unto other people? And we listen to all these lies about the stuff that, you know, the world blames God doing. And God took your daughter. God did this and God did that. And God caused your baby to die. And God took your mama and God took your husband and he, God took your wife. And he needed them, you know, more than you needed them. And, you know, God understands. And we, you know, we don't know, you know, the things of God and all this foolishness. And you ask somebody. Why in the world was your child born with a certain sickness or disease? And we say it's to glorify God. And so many of us, even before children are born today, we already know that they're supposed to be born with some type of deficiency. They can detect whether a child is going to be born with Down syndrome or born with some type of sickness or disease before the child is actually even born. But because we haven't been taught correctly, imagine you are a family and now you have a child and the doctor tells you that the child is going to be born with all of these mental uh, deficiencies. And he's given you an opportunity to abort the child or if you have the child, you have to understand that your life is going to be chaotic. It's not going to be a normal life. Because this child will need 24-hour care no matter when they're little or when they grow up. They will never be normal. And they're speaking and saying all of these things. And guess what? If you're not being taught right, what are you going to do? You're gonna, most people are going to receive that. Why? Because they expect the opinion of the doctor. But if you know the word of God, you know the authority of God, you can say, no, I do not receive that. I believe that this child is a gift from God and every good gift is perfect and comes from above the father of life. And there is no shadow. That's what I'm talking about. There are things that are happening and things that are coming into your life that are not your portion. And how you respond and how you react and the appropriation of faith of how you deal with it determines the outcome, whether you receive it. See, and there's things that are being established that we just see that there's there's no other way around it. There's no. See, this is an hour of God's kingdom where we're realizing that we have the power to render and bring change into the earth. And we're not just accepting stuff that the enemy is trying to throw at us. The day is gone where we're just going to begin to accept whatever the enemy throws at you and puts in, in your plate. Some of you, he's convinced you and told you that you're going to be single forever. That, that You know, you, you'll never find a mate. You'll never find, find, find a spouse. And you look around at other people and he gives you examples and say you're going to be just like that. What is our appropriation of faith toward that? If we receive it, it becomes our reality. This is what we don't understand. But if we grab a hold and take the word of God and say, that is not my portion. 
that is not my portion. And we declare and we decree and we break that evil uh, 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 altar. We break that evil curse that we've come into agreement with. See, because whether you realize it or not, you come into agreement with it. If you're not speaking against it, if you're not declaring anything that's contrary to it, you're in agreement with it. And some people say, well, I ain't saying nothing. Your silence is in essence an approval. Why? Because you're still thinking and the power lies within your thoughts. As a man thinketh, no gender intended. As a woman thinketh too, so is she. (laughs) Okay. This is what I'm talking about, people of God. This is what I'm talking about right now. Will we stop accepting? This is when revival begins to come. Revival begins to break out. We sit down and talk to people and find out what is really on their heart. What are they really, really dealing with? What do they really believe in God for? What do they really desire? What do they really want? And then we walk them through the word of God, giving them and showing them scripture and showing them what God has to say and showing them how to stand on the word of God and begin to change every single thing that the enemy has spoken and decreed and said, whether it's through the mouth of authority or whether it's through the mouth, amen, of situations and circumstances that we deal with and we face every single day in life. It's time for us to believe it and receive it. It's time for us to believe it and receive it. I'm talking to the church today. God never quits pouring out his Holy Spirit. He never stops. He never stops. He never stops. It is a continual pouring. And ever since he poured it out on the day of Pentecost, when they waited, he's still pouring. He's still pouring. It never stopped. You know, that's why religious folk got it twisted because, you know, some people are still teaching you got to go tarry for the Holy Ghost. You don't have to wait for it anymore. It's here. The Holy Spirit is in the earth. He's constantly being poured out, looking for vessels to fill. You don't have to wait on it. He's waiting for you to just open up and to allow him in and to let him in. The Bible says, how freely will my father give you the Holy Spirit? You don't have to wait for it and tarry for it. You don't have to go into a corner and beg God. No. It's freely given. It's already here. The promise was intended to simply go from generation to generation to, from, uh, to all believers throughout time. From generation to generation that we teach our children how to stand in faith, how to walk and how to believe in faith. Amen. Just like we're teaching our children, we're teaching our sons, we're teaching our daughters. And yes, the enemy hates them and the enemy wants to try to stop them. But you know what? You can't stop me. Some people might say, well, you know, be be quiet. You don't want to upset the devil. The devil already upset because he knows his time is short. That's why he's clowning and manifesting through all these people because he knows his time is short. It's foolishness. We can just believe God and receive his free gift of the Holy Spirit, which is given. It's a free gift. It's freely given. Let me share this with you. The reason that we're not seeing a greater revival is because we have very few people who are simply flowing in revival. What do I mean by flowing in revival? Taking the initiative to revive other people. I believe that the authoritative word of God has the power to revive men. I believe that the authoritative word of God has the power, amen, to revive women. I believe that it has the power, amen, to heal the sick. I believe that it has power to raise the dead. I believe that it has power, amen, to set captives free, to change your financial situation. I believe the word of God has power. That's the reason why we're not seeing it is because we don't believe it. We don't receive it because whatever you believe and receive, you act upon it. Stop hoarding the Holy Ghost. 
You ever see that movie Hoarders? Stop hoarding the Holy Ghost. And give other people what you got. Because they need it. They need this message. They need this message. They need this message. They, they, they need your counsel. They need the teaching that you're getting right now. Teach them how to come out of agreement with this stuff. And oftentimes, as you're teaching and imparting to someone else, it builds your own faith up. It takes you to a new level. Amen? So the reason that we're, we're, we're not seeing a greater manifestation of revival is because we're not flowing in revival. We're not believing God's word. We're not asking their authority. We're not asking, excuse me, their permission to take authority and making the power of God mani manifest. How many know you have to make the power of God mani manifest? You have to make the power of God mani manifest. You have to make the power of God manifest. How many know I have the power to make the power of God man manifest? We see it throughout Scripture, through all the prophets of old. They had faith and confidence and trust in their God, just like Elijah. He came to the prophet of Baal. He said, okay, you pray to your God, then when you get done, I'll pray to my God, and then we see which one responds in answer. So Elijah went down, made him a little cot. He went to sleep all while they was doing their, you know, spells and they were calling on and this and that and the other thing. And he got up, he said, he said, your God must be on vacation. <laughs> he must have went to Acapulco. <laughs> he down in Vegas somewhere. <laughs> he out in the Car 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 Caribbean on the cruise because he sure ain't answering you. Then he told him, are, are you done yet? Why did he have such confidence and boldness in his God? The Bible said that those that know their God shall be mighty and do exploits. You know your God. You know what he's capable of. You know what he will do. You know his will is to heal every single time. You know, he told you, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Even though the world will try to tell you, circumstances will try to present the case that God has left you, that God has forsaken you. No, he's not. He's right there in you, living in you. And then he prayed to his God. Matter of fact, he said, now pour, pour some water on it. <laughs> Y'all know how hard it is to start a fire in water, ain't you? You ever start, try to start a fire with wet wood? And the Bible said that the fire came down from, to let you know it came down from heaven, started at the top, <laughs> devoured ev everything, and then came down just like in a cartoon and licked up the water. <laughs> they said, what kind of God is this? We know we start fires at the bottom. But God was letting you know, I am the God of heaven and earth. And I start at the top and burn this thing down to nothing. Why? Because he knew his God. And that's what happens when we begin to step out in boldness. I shared my testimony with you guys. It's going to take boldness. Somebody say what? Boldness. This is why. God told Joshua when Moses was dead and he, it was time for him to transition and rise up. And I'm saying to you today, it's time for you to transition and rise up. Amen. Things have changed. There's been a transition. There's a change of order. Ministry is not just taking place from the pulpit. Ministry is not just taking place from apostles, prophets, teachers, and evangelists. Ministry is taking place from the congregation, from the church, from the body. There's been a change of order. And I'm sharing with you today, as he told Joshua, he kept telling him, that is the most repetitious place God ever kept repeating something in the whole Bible. 
because he wanted him to understand that, Joshua, you're going to have to be bold. You're going to have to have courage. What is courage? Courage is the ability to confront your fears of everything that you're about to do. It's telling you you can't do it. You're outnumbered. It's not going to happen. They're bigger than you. They know more than you. They got more money than than, uh, you. Amen. They were in opposition. You're the minority and they're the majority. They control everything. They make their own laws. They make their own rules. And then God sends you out to tear them down. It's like a David and Goliath story. But because you know your God, amen, when the enemy starts prophesying, just like, uh, amen, Goliath began to prophesy to David, didn't he? He was like, look, this is a joke. You sent out a little redhead boy, you know, to come out against me. Amen. You don't have anybody stronger or bigger than that. He start prophesying and he tells David, David, I'm going to take your head and I'm going to cut it off and I'm going to feed it to the fowl of the air. And you know what David said? The young man and David said, no, pal, it ain't going down like that. He starts slinging a, a, a slingshot with just stones in it. And you're like stones against a giant. But he knew it wasn't him. It was the God in him. And he said, no, it's your head that's going to come off. And it's your head that the fowls of the air are going to begin to eat today. And the Bible said that David wasn't afraid. The Bible said this. Go back and read this if you don't believe me. But the Bible said that David ran to the battle. He didn't cautiously go in and say, God, oh, I don't know how I'm going to do this. Uh, God, I hope you uh, 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 help me. Lord, please, uh, I don't know how we're going to overcome this. But the Bible said he ran to the battle. (laughs) He ran. He had intensity. He was taking that thing to the paint like LeBron. Amen. He was was coming in in that thing. (laughs) He wasn't coming to the whole timid. Are you here? Why? Because he was bold. This is the age and the error that God is causing us and requiring us to be bold. Some may say arrogance. Some may say pride. But no, we know and trust in the God that we serve. We boast in him. Not in our own ability. It's like the Apostle Paul, that my righteousness is as filthy rags in his sight. I can do nothing, but Christ strengthens me. He said, I count everything that I've done as dung. It means nothing. But he said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Why? Because it is the power unto salvation. We boast in the God. Are you boasting in your God? Are you boasting in your God? Are you telling people when you go in the council and say, God can fix that. That's no problem. That's that's easy. I don't care if the doctors have pronounced it. I don't care if the doctor said that the baby ain't going to live. I don't care if the doctor said that the baby, amen, will have to have a feeding tube in him for the rest of his life. I don't care if they say he'll have to be on med- medication. That's easy for God. Let me just work on you. And let me just shift your mindset. Amen. To understand so you know my God. You'll know the will of my God. Are you willing to commit to that? Are you here? Woo! Somebody say, I believe it and receive it. Thank you, Jesus. Martin Luther, one of the great revivalists. He heard the word and he believed it at a time period in religious churches where they were not seeing the power and the manifestation of God in the church. He was like, God, there's got to be something better than this. He began to go and he read the Bible and then he connected with a verse in Romans. Romans 3, 27, 28, it says, when it, it, it says it like this. Where is boasting then? It is excluded by what the law of the works. He said now, but by the law of faith. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. 
A man is justified by faith. We read the patriarchs of old, they all obtained a good report by faith. So what is your appropriation of faith towards the grace of God, towards what God has already done, towards what God has already completed? And when we talked about the child being born perfect, even though the doctors have labeled and they put all these labels and they put all of these infirmities on him, what is the appropriation of faith toward that? Even though the world says that you will forever be single, you will forever be in the situation, what is your appropriation of faith toward that? Even though the world and the government comes against you and they accuse you of this and they accuse you of that and they say this and they say that, what is the appropriation of your faith toward that? That's all that matters. The Reformation age sprung up as a result of Martin Luther. And the world was forever changed by one single person. The world was changed by one physical human being. Now, we talked about this, right? God just needs a body. Man, we need it on a T-shirt. All he needs is a body. God, all I need is a body. All he needs is a body. One man, one physical human being believed, received, and acted upon the word of God. And this is what sparked the healing revival that sprung up because of some, someone that saw healing in the word of God and connected it with faith. Believed God and simply began to be stirred and release the power of God into the earth by using his authority. This is what has happened in every move of God. Someone has read something in the word of God, believed it, and began to step out on it. This is why I'm talking about revival today. I want to spark something in you. I want to stir something in you that you'll begin to start revival in your own life. How do you start revival in your own life? By finding those that need to be revived. By finding those that need to be dead and beginning to breathe. Begin to perform spiritual CPR into their spiritual bodies and watch them come alive and watch life spring up out of them through you. All he needed is a body. And they simply stepped out in faith on the word of God and they saw the Holy Spirit demonstrated over and over and over and over again. This is what inspired mighty and massive moves of God. Because someone read something in the Bible, they believed God, and they stepped out in it. We can pray for revival till we blew in the face. But you know, it will never happen until we just simply take the initiative to start reviving people. When we begin to revive people, you know, and I look back at that church, and I said, none of that would have ever happened had we not, not left our comfort zone. And we were doing it in Grand, Grand Rapids before we came over here when I first got saved in the 80s. I remember going in the folks' house. I went in a family house one day. Girl was in there smoking crack. We had a team of three three people. She was crying out to God saying, I said, I wanted to quit. I got out. You know, when I get out, I don't, don't, don't want to be out. When I ain't out, I can't. We casting the devil out. of. We ain't no, no more. We just had come, man, you devil, come out in Jesus' name. Send the follow-up team in there. They bring in the church on Sunday. Amen. They take her to the altar. Amen. A week later, she getting baptized in the Holy Ghost. Amen. And then three months later, she, she in the choir. She on the worship team. That's revival. That is changing and reforming lives. My wife will tell you she got saved in the mix of revival. Amen. That we came to their house. Uh, Pastor John ministering to her mom. What, what happened? I, I know we was ministering to your mom because some, somebody called us to go minister to your mom. And the target wasn't even for her. It was for, for her mom. Oh, that's right. She had got invited to church and then she, she ended up coming. But it was through an outright attack to just bring revival into people's lives.
That's how revival takes place. That's nothing miraculous. That just happens. I think somebody think that revival happens almost like, uh, you know, like uh, Charles Darwin say the big explosion. It just, you know, it just happens. You just pray for it and all of a sudden one day it just happens. No, no. It happens one person at a time as we get the revelation to begin to revive. As we come out of our victim mentality and stop looking for other people to solve our problem and we begin to now grab and bring other people unto him and bring the word of God in them. And all of a sudden we see an explosion of revival of God's grace and mercy and love being poured out in a community and upon a nation of people that brings restoration and change forever. I want you to bow your head as we pray. Father, we thank you for revival in this city. We claim Muskegon County, Lord. We pray for other churches and and ministries to get this revelation. Not just to pray, but God, to begin to act, to believe, receive, and respond. And preach the gospel. For it is the power unto salvation. And Lord, I pray for each and every person watching here today. Under the sound of my voice, if, if you need a church, a home church, you don't have a church. You're not connected to a lifeline. and We want you to just inbox us. Amen. Just inbox us. And just let us know and say, I, I need to get connected. You need to get saved, whatever it is. If you need you, you need counseling, you need marriage counseling, you need whatever it is that you know that you need because God's speaking to you today. I make an invitation that we have ministers that will minister to you, that will labor and help usher you and birth you to the place where you need to be. Father, I bless your people today. And I thank you that this word has not fallen upon deaf ears, but it is falling upon pliable hearts. And the word and the seed that is being planted, Lord, shall take root and grow and flourish. And to come to the full flourishing of trees that bear fruit that others may come and glean and eat from, that they may be nourished. That the power of succession and reproduction would begin to take place in our original mandate being fruitful and multiplying that we may spiritually replenish this county. In Jesus' name, Father, we pray. (laughs) Amen and amen. Everyone in agreement with that. Hallelujah. Come on, just give the Lord some praise this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. Well, God bless you. Thank you for for coming this morning, tuning in. If you need a prayer, we will be here um, at the altar to to minister um, to you. Amen. If not, God bless you. We'll see you next week at the river. Amen. We love you and have an awesome, awesome week. Amen.